divine plan. I may not always understand, but I trust his leadership. He's never failed a person, and I'll not be the first. Say, I'll not be the first. As part of his plan, he does not allow any bad thing to happen to me. Neither does he allow any bad person to come to me. See, I am well protected by him. Therefore, I have no regrets in the name of Jesus. I have no anxiety of my future. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am alert and ready to receive his word. Anything in my heart that will hinder his word is hereby commanded to leave. I receive the word of God with purity and soundness of mind and heart. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's go right into the word. Um, we can start from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. I'm continuing from where we left off last week. There is that speaketh like piercing of a sword, uh -huh. but the tongue of the wise is health. Hallelujah. The lips of truth shall be established forever. Mm. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Praise God. Let's go back to verse 18. There is that speaking like piercing of a sword. Uh -huh. But the tongue of the wise is health. Let's do NIV of verse 18. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Can we read it together so we can sit down? One, two, three. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Heavenly Father, I pray that from today our tongues will bring healing as we hear and receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated on the neck of your enemies. Hallelujah. So I'm continuing my, uh, my two or three part, depending on how today goes, message on offense. I titled it, Do Not Be Offended. So last week, by the special grace of God, we spoke about uh, a man named Ahidophel and uh, another man named Absalom and a man that we all know, King David. And then one familiar name came up, Eliam. Then we noticed that um, Ahithophel was the, in fact, uh, Eliam was the father of Bathsheba and Ahithophel was therefore Bathsheba's grandfather. They lived together, I mean, uh, they were from the same family. No wonder Bathsheba lived so close to the, temp to the uh, White House where King David lived. So while King David was uh, on the rooftop, and I explained that we do not know why he was on the rooftop, but the Bible says it is better to dwell on the rooftop than in a home with a brawling woman. So I'm not sure why he was there, but I, I just thought there's a scripture. And so while he was there, he saw Bathsheba taking a shower. That tells you how close Bathsheba was living to the White House. Praise God. Yeah. May the Lord bring you close to a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so then because uh, of the action of king david he saw Bathsheba, who was married he took Bathsheba in and uh, later on killed his i mean her husband uh urias uh, he didn't physically kill uriah he sent he killed uriah through a letter he sent a letter and uh by that letter he was placed 
at a war front and at the front line of uh, the army where he was killed. And although he did not kill physically uh, the man, uh, God rebuked him for killing the man. <laughs> you missed it. He said, although he did not physically stab the man or shoot the man or throw a, uh, a, a, an arrow at the man, God blamed him for killing the man. Are you with me? Although Judas did not hang Jesus Christ, he's blamed for killing Christ. Yeah, yeah. I pray that this week you watch what you put your hands into and the conversations that you put your letters, your words into. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then um, as a result, uh, King David is blamed and then fast forward, King David ends up getting married to Bathsheba. They produce a child named Solomon. Solomon um, they produce the first child and the first child dies and then a the second child is produced named Solomon. But in between all of this, uh, his own son Ahithophel, I mean uh, Absalom, rises up against him and Absalom uh, together with Ahithophel rose up against him. Now Ahithophel was his counselor. Ahithophel was a friend, a good one. But the reason why Ahithophel rose up against King David is because he was offended. He was offended because King David took Bathsheba, that is Ahithophel's uh, granddaughter, right? Ahithophel's granddaughter. So Ahithophel got upset. He was offended, but kept it silent until the day when they finally rose up against King David and the entire kingdom, forgetting that uh, upon rising up uh, against King David, they will be rising up against God himself. And see, it is therefore important that in this world we are watchful of who you, we rise up against. King David might be short, he might be stinking, but King David, the hand of God is on, upon the life of King David. Uh, hallelujah. And, and it might surprise some of you or some of us right now that you just might be sitting next to a King David in a male form or a female form and you may not know. Is someone with me? Yeah, don't judge me by my today. I may not look like any beautiful girl or any beautiful boy today, but my tomorrow is hidden in some, my God. My tomorrow, no one knows my tomorrow except my God. In fact, I don't even know. That is what happened to Joseph. If Joseph knew that upon telling his dream, he would be sold into a slavery, his brothers would rise up against him. Joseph would have been silent. He was just an innocent boy. In fact, I'm, he, I, I believe he was the less gifted among the brethren. Are you with me? Yeah, he was, I believe he was less gifted. But yet, uh, because of a lack of understanding of where God would take him, he spoke, he did certain things. He spoke and uh, of course they rose up against him. But the point here is don't be quick to write people off. Don't judge anyone by their looks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So anyway, King Ahithophel, who had worked for so long with King David, thought that, you know, with King David is my boy. I know him. I know him. I share a lot with him. I am his advisor. In fact, he does not do anything without consulting me. You know, stuff like that can make your head swell. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, I mean, I've seen folks' head swell so much, even the head of drivers swell. Drivers are like, well, without me, she cannot get to her destination. Praise God. You know, like she needs me, you know. Uh, you know, everyone, uh, after spending so much time around certain people, you might be tempted to feel like you are one of them or you are like them. But would you please be kind in all humility? Turn to someone and tell them we're not the same. Oh, please tell someone that's the wrong neighbor. Turn to someone and tell them we're not the same. 
Yeah, God made me different. He made you different. You are unique in your own way. You are beautiful in your own way. God has blessed you with a special assignment and it's different from my assignment. But when we under you understand your assignment, I understand my assignment and we have the love of God in our midst. It will glue us together and together we become a powerful force for a thousand shall put one shall put a flight at ten, a thousand and two ten thousand. Are you with me? But we cannot put 10,000 to flight without love because the Bible said can two walk together except they be agreed is someone with me I pray this hour in the name of Jesus that anything that stands in the way of the love of God from manifesting in your life will be removed out of the way I read my word the other day and it said light and darkness cannot coexist come on Ahithophel I know you offended but at some point in time you gotta learn how to overcome come this thing and let love reign i pray that the love of god will begin to reign in our heart reign in our lives in the name of jesus may the love of god glue us to the power of the cross and the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus i pray that love will reign in us again in the name of jesus may the love of christ may the love of god reign in the church again may the love of god reign again in our families may the love of God reign again in our churches may the love of God reign again in the kingdom that when we worship our worship will be pure that when we pray our prayers will be acceptable in the name of Jesus I pray this hour that his love be released upon us and into the house someone shall I receive so I hear fell falls out of love he's offended as a result of this he rises up against king david and the whole nation and he ends up losing his life he loses his life absalom also loses his life all because of a simple prayer that king david prayed he said lord let the counsel of ahithophel be turned into foolishness and by that simple prayer I hear for die. King David, I mean, uh, King David lived. Absalom died. King David lived. I hear of her really died of double offense. First, he was offended at King David. And then secondly, he was offended at King David's son, Absalom. Please tap someone lightly and tell him, don't be offended. You didn't look them in the eye. Please look them in the eye. Tell them, don't be offended. I'm trying to save you some money. So I shared a few things that happens uh, when we are offended. But today my focus is to expound on the definition of offense. My objective is to expound on the definition of offense and also explain a few more things that offense can do to individuals then if time permits we'll go into how to handle offense which i highly doubt that we can get to so the word offense really comes from two Greek words. Scandalon, excuse me, scandalon, S-C-A-N-D-A-L-O-N, scandalon, and proscoma, pronounced as provscoma but spelled as P-R-O-K-O-M-M-A. These two words both carry the connotation of sinfulness or stumbling block. Sinfulness or stumbling block. 
It therefore stands to reason that offense is not only a sin, but offense serves as a stumbling block. So when you are offended, you are not only sinning, but you are serving as a stumbling block. The question is for who? So offense is a stumbling block. Now what does a stumbling block do? Stumbling block is like a wall. It hinders you from progressing. It hinders you from seeing well. It hinders you from receiving what belongs to you. And the enemy often desires time and again to place stumbling blocks in our life. So you may, want, you may find someone who's really offended. Maybe things were going well for them until they got really offended. And once offense set in, things changed. Now things began to not go too well. Why? Because a stumbling block has been erected. I pray this day, any stumbling block that has been erected in your life as a result of past hurt, as a result of offense, in the name of Jesus, may those stumbling blocks be broken, may be removed out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your life, in the name of Jesus. I pray that stumbling block that came as a result of the pain of your yes from your yesterday, the stumbling block that may have come as a result of disappointment the stumbling block that may have showed up as a result of the current offense that you are dealing with I pray in the name of Jesus may that stumbling block be removed may the Lord give us the grace in fact the grace has already been given may the blood of Jesus wash any kind of offense and stumbling block out of your heart out of your mind out of, in fact, out of your soul in the name of Jesus someone shout out so offense is a stumbling block so it is like a bait the best way to explain it it is like a bait that the enemy uses to stop people are you with me it tastes enticing it looks and in fact it, it takes it tastes let me where is he let me borrow your word it tastes palatable sumptuous you know lady amanda once had a picture she's not as we got to pray for lady amanda to you know step up her social media um she's not a social media person uh, i need not my but praise god um so she posted one picture in fact i did did i or i did oh, okay wow so I, I posted a picture and I said, caption this or comment below, something like that. And of her, of Lady Amanda, and people were writing, beautiful, gorgeous, um, uh, wonderful, you know, all kinds of wonderful words. And then someone, uh, a young person in the church, went, decided to also comment. And their comment was, some shots. <laughs> Hallelujah. Their comment was some shots. Praise God. So then we asked, we asked this person, we said, why some shots? Like, you know, that's something you, you know, you, you, you ascribe to food. Why? Like the food is some shots. So why some shots? They said, bro, you know, all the words had already been used in <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it, so offense is like a sumptuous bait that the enemy uses. It is attractive. It takes it tastes so good. King David was offered that bait, but he refused to take it. No wonder we hear things when it comes to offense in the English language. We say, "Don't take offense." It is an offer. 
it's an offer it's a bait you have a choice we have a choice to take it or reject it hallelujah when when you go fishing and you place the bait on your hook and you cast the hook down into the river the sea or wherever you're fishing the fishes in the sea have an option or the fishes in the water have an option either to take the bait or reject the bait or run from the bait i pray for the grace in the name of jesus the grace to see this evil bait from afar and run from it in the name of jesus it looks it may look attractive it may look self-fulfilling like you know when someone offends you and you offend them back sometimes as humans i mean i know i'm speaking to angels but uh you know sometimes it feels good right it feels good to to pay them back hallelujah but i believe last week we read how that the scripture says that we should not take revenge into our own hands i believe that was romans chapter 12 verse 19 do not take revenge my dear friends leave but leave room for god can we look at that scripture romans chapter 12 verse uh, 19 niv thank you uh, can we read it together it's sunday morning we shout tonight all right verse 19 let's go do not uh-huh yes but leave room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the can we read it one more time do not take revenge uh-huh All right. So it means that anytime we take revenge, do not take revenge. That's also an offer. That's also an offer. Do not take revenge. It's there. You can do it. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. You can, you can pick up that thing and you can hit them in the leg or something. But don't take revenge. Are you with me? Whatever comes to your head, don't do it. Has anyone ever been upset? Not mad, upset. <laughs> Not angry, just upset. Anybody? Yeah? And what have you felt like doing when you are upset? You know, often when you're upset, you want to punch someone in their jaw. <laughs> right? Or you might, you might just want to do something crazy you understand yeah i i really don't want to go down your lane because you know we really don't want to hear what 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 was said in your head silently yes are you with me yeah i've heard a lot of testimonies and it all somewhere in those testimonies we have certain words you know certain words seem to be called current it is but god prof i almost pull but god <laughs> i almost but god hallelujah so if we are to truly share the things that runs through our heads when we are upset in fact if you are truly to do that right now the person next to you might not want to sit next to you they might just go use the bathroom and they, i promise you they'll come back to the service they'll just not be sitting next to you are you with me what you try to do what only because what he stole your what another guy was texting her and you wanted to do what just for that you see hallelujah so a lot of things run through our heads some do it some don't there are many who are in prison unfortunately right now only because they got upset and they could not control it you know 
they were offended so they took the bait you have a choice you have an option don't take it say father help me not to take it hallelujah say heavenly father i need your help help me not to take it when it's offered to me see absalom had a choice he could have easily taken it or not taken it he chose to take it he chose to take it and that ended his life i believe i shared that last week that one of the things that offense can do to you is that it can end your life offense kills it kills it kills hallelujah all right now in galatians chapter 3 verse 28 we read that there is neither jew nor gentile nor slave nor free nor is there male and female for you are all one in christ jesus hallelujah we are all one in christ jesus but in the presence of offense the opposite of this is reinforced to promote discrimination among race races among genders even discrimination by age hallelujah but paul in his letter to the galatians says there is no difference in christ we are one we may not be one in ranking but we are one in the lord we not we may not be one in gift things but we are one in the lord therefore now this is what it means really you see as jesus is one with the father so are we one with jesus and one with each other in christ now watch this before jesus died he prayed a prayer he said father i pray that you let these ones be in me as i have i am also i have also been in you lived in you so that they in me will be in you is someone with me let them live in me so that i will just as i have also lived in you so that they in me will be in you <laughs> say i'm in god say i'm in god hallelujah so if we are all in god if i offend you i'm really offending myself and i'm offending the lord the church is really quiet it's quiet if i understand that i'm in god i'm in him and he's in me and you are in him and we're all in him then uh, we wouldn't have no clicks are you with me if i understand that i'm in him and him he's in me and you are in him and we all in the lord go to go to john chapter 15. your silence is working me out it's working me out that's what it is i'm stepping on toes i don't mean to i don't mean to there's one toe that i really want to step on though you want to know her name and his name the devil i want to step on his toe and her toe hallelujah i like that he like <laughs> praise god go to are we there john chapter 15 let's do it quickly he says i'm the true vine now watch this okay and ivy thank you you are amazing i'm the true vine and my father is a gardener we understand that right we know vine okay replace that with avocado tree or orange tree right so i'm the tree and my father is the gardener he who's he talking about the father right he cuts off every branch in me 
that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Hobasha. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Pause. If words, remember I said last week that King David sent a letter and a letter kills. The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit makes life. Now, I did not explain it uh, theologically. Uh, theologically, that would be a wrong explanation, but uh, prophetically and revelatorily, I can say that the letter, in fact, does kill. Are you with me? And if the letter does kill, then the same letter can give you life. Are you with me? That let us, in fact, let's, let's, can I be literal? Can I be literal? Are you with me? Are you sure? I have a letter in my hand. All right. Now this letter, this letter here is written by what? What do you see here? Huh? Words. Are you with me? Words. King David sent a letter words and that letter killed a man when God was getting ready to save men God decided he had sent prophets they were killed somewhere stoned, killed, rejected he sent oh, he's, if I, he sent John the Baptist he sent many people. He sent Joel. He sent Isaiah. He sent Jeremiah. He sent all the prophets. You name it. He sent them all. But they were all not adhered to. Then he decided to send a letter. He decided to send his word. Hallelujah. So, can David use a letter, words, to kill a man? God says, I'm going to use the same letters, words, that can David use to kill man, to save man. So, I read my word the other day, and it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What is this letter made of? Words. The Bible says the same was with God in the beginning, and the Bible says all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Scripture says in him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shined in darkness darkness and darkness comprehended it not the bible said there was a man and this man was sent from god this man was not he was not the main guy his name was john and the bible said the same came for a witness to bear witness of that true light who is the word the bible says in verse 8 that he was not the light he was not the light but he came to bear witness of that light are you with me the true True light verse 9 says and then verse 10 makes me understand that he was in the world but the world did not know him why because the world knew the letter that killeth they did not know they did not have a revelation of the letter that makes a life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus that your letter your words will give life from today may our words give life in the name of Jesus so you see in the flesh our letter kills King David was in the flesh and then he saw Bathsheba and said I want this one anything that I can do to get it I, I, I'll do it in fact I'll get it by hook or by crook if it means that I use my letters to kill, I'll use my letter, my power to kill. Are you with me? So in the flesh, our letters 
kill but in the spirit our letters gives life in Christ our letters gives life but in the world we kill each other with our words is someone with me in in Christ our words do not make us murderers but in the world our words make us murderers I pray in Jesus name by the grace and mercy of God that any spirit of offense that was that is pushing anyone to use your words against your own self to kill your own self to kill others let that power of the enemy and that assignment of the enemy against your life come to an end in the name of Jesus you will not die before your time your family will not die before their time no one around you shall be moved shall die only because of letters I pray if there be anything let the letters bring life let the word of God bring you life let the word let the words of each other bring forth life life into our bones life into our life in the name of Jesus I speak life someone receive life yeah so you see can David use his words his letters his influence to kill uh, to read Hamakuva to get rid of the rightful owner of Bathsheba quote unquote her husband. My next point for today is found in Matthew chapter 38. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. You have heard that it was said, I for I and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not NIV. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I think I read it wrong. Can we read it together? Verse 39. But, but uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. You were, no, let's read it together. I think I think that one was that. Oh, I know, I know. That one was to the church in Galicia or something. No, who wasn't it? Paul who wrote this, or that was James, or who who said this? That's Jesus. Good to see you, Mama. That's Jesus. So as for this one, you cannot run from this one. Ah, you cannot. You cannot hide behind, oh, that was for Timothy. You know, Timothy was his son. I'm a female. The devil is a liar. This is you and me. But I tell you, can we read it together? Who oh, no, there's stress. But I, I tell you, uh huh. We don't see that in our churches no more. <laughs> Folks say, well, you know, at this time they were still in transition. It's close to the Old Testament. So there's like laws. The devil is, shut up, this is Jesus. That's Jesus speaking. You better, you know, you either in this or you're not. Hallelujah. You either in it or you're not. Praise God. I, I know, I. I think I may have, I can even imagine you pray, Lord, use me for your glory, whatever you desire. And the Lord said, okay, offense, go, bait, take it, don't. In fact, the Lord didn't, he just allowed the enemy to. Because the Lord does not tempt men. Hallelujah. And we, we do realize that any time the Lord wants to, in fact, look at the story of Job, when the Lord wanted to bless Job with double, what did he do? So anytime offense comes our way, it means that there is a chance for upliftment. There's a chance for blessing. You joke on your own self and settle for offense and stay low. Are you with me? It's a sign that God wants to bless someone. Jesus, my God, Jesus is getting ready to go on the cross. Are you with me? He tells his story to the disciples and then one guy behind him. His name is Petros. Y'all know him? 
Yeah, Peter, Peter. Peter says, no, you're not going to go. It's, this, no, this is too bad. This can't happen to you. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. It can't happen to you. Uh -uh. He was offering him a bait. Then he turns to Peter and says, get thee from behind me, Satan. He refused to take it. Hallelujah. King David was offered that opportunity. They said to him, listen, why don't you send us, we'll go and kill Absalom and Ahithophel. We'll get rid of them. Revenge. He was offered that. Like, get offended. He said, no, I'd rather pray. Hallelujah. Because see, there are certain things that I must let God do in my life. Hallelujah. God wants to show his, himself strong in my life. God wants to bless. God wants to favor. God wants to increase. But if we keep stepping in the way and keep trying to figure things out and keep trying to revenge and answer everybody and every critique, the devil is a lie. We're doing too much you must have a lot of time why don't we just get on our knees pray call on him yes offense may come and it sure does come and trust me i told you all last week this is a top message for me to preach because i sure been offended are you with me yeah yeah you, you know we're getting ready very soon, a few months, we're doing 41 days of prayer. Um, by the special grace of God, we are prayer and worship uh, experience coming up. You know, we have all of these things coming up. Ain't you tired of yelling and not seeing no result? Ain't you tired of seeing everybody else go up and you clapping for them going up? Ain't you, I mean, I mean ain't you? Uh, ain't you tired? Ain't you ready for your own breakthrough? Your own answer? Your own open door? Ain't you? Are you not ready for your second and third business? Are you not ready for favor? Are you not ready for marriage? Are you not ready for an open door? Are you not ready? Hey, I thought we were, but apparently maybe not. Because if we are, we'll stop taking a bait. In fact, we'll, we'll, we'll praise God for the baits. We we'll praise God for the baits. May the Lord open our eyes to see the baits miles away. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord open our eyes to see the baits. When they when the baits are showing up from, I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to see it. In the name of Jesus, and give us the wisdom to flee from this bait. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. It hinders. It serves as an obstacle. Are you with me? We say we believe God, we trust Him, and all. And He says, Here it is. He says, I tell you the truth. Do not resist an evil person. Is that, is that what it says? Grandma is watching. Let's see. I tell you the truth. Do not resist an evil person. Say, evil person. Evil person. There's a difference between an evil person and an evil spirit. Are you with me? Yeah, do not when Jesus encountered the men filled with possessed with evil spirits, he did not cast the men into the sea. So stop killing each other. Let's stop killing each other with our letters, with our words. Let's deal with the spirit behind that thing. Are you with me? Let us not resist. Are you with me? Let's deal with the spirit behind that thing. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of offense. Any evil spirit of offense that the enemy has sent to your house. Your family. Sent to the church. Sent to our nation. By prayer in the name of Jesus. Let that spirit be bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. I belong, to God. I belong to God because his word says so. Says so. Oh, you thought I forgot. We were reading John chapter, uh, John chapter 15. And then he says, So I'm the vine and the branches. Did we even get there? Verse 4. 
So he says, yeah, to be more fruitful. Then he says, let's look at verse 3 once again. He says, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. You see, so his word cleanses us. It gives us life. It makes us whole. The words we receive in the flesh, it, it, it does nothing. It does nothing but kill. Hallelujah. Next, verse 14. I mean, verse 4, I'm sorry. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Remain in me. I'm reminded of you. I'm, Lord, you are my residence. Hallelujah. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when we try to take the work of the tree to ourselves as the branch, it becomes so heavy we break. Proper English, we break down. It becomes so tough we hit a stumbling block because we're trying to take his work we're trying to do his way you're just a branch accept the responsibility as a branch be a branch stop trying to be god hallelujah let's read it God. all right so it says no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me so the goal of the enemy so the enemy does not want you to be fruitful but God wants you to be fruitful check are you with me God wants you to be fruitful the enemy does not so if you were the enemy what would you do to you that's a trick question <laughs> all right so hear me so because the enemy does not want us to be fruitful what he does is that he uses different baits to stop you from being fruitful and one of the baits is stumbling block offense hallelujah so in the presence of offense let me explain this in the presence of offense it, you find it difficult to hear from the Lord. Write it down. You find it difficult to hear from the Lord when you are offended. Offense blinds you from seeing. It blinds you from seeing clearly. What do you do when you, when you are upset, when you are angry at your husband or your wife? Okay, husbands and wives don't get upset. Um, <laughs> when you are upset at people at work or you have said at a brother or a sister or a friend what comes to your you know you have said when you lay down and and you close your eyes what do you think about someone said violence we have honesty in the house today Wow, praise God. Well, let's put our hands together. Honesty has come back to the... Honesty, oh, you are not clapping. Honesty has returned to the church. It's a great accomplishment. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah. Honesty has come back to the church. What comes to mind when you are upset? You just close your eyes for a moment or you go into your car and you really upset. What comes to mind? What to do? You said sing? No, oh, I thought honesty was here. What happened? Saying something. Revenge. Higher. Yeah. Revenge. Hallelujah. So you see, you close your eyes, and instead of seeing the good things, the things that God, instead of seeing any good thing, all you see is revenge. Punch them in the face. Yes. Give them an uppercut. Hey. Give them a flat tire. 
Huh? Put sugar in their tank? Whoa! Now, honesty is in the house. So, what does that do? Sugar in the tank. <laughs> wow. Man. Wow. It's a blessing. Do what? Lie to the police about them. Honesty is in the house. Let's put our hands together for honesty in the house. Oh, you are not clapping. Honesty has come back to the church. Wow. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So you see, <laughs> there was, um, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Honesty is in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what I said. Or you get upset, you're offended, or you get upset and you just want to spank your child. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So it hinders, it blinds you from seeing. You don't see well, you see. It blinds you, it hinders you from receiving from the Lord. So if you were the enemy and wanted to attack someone who's at the verge of breakthrough with offense, at what point would you visit them with offense? At the verge of breakthrough. Because everything in this world is timed. For as long as it is here on earth, it is timed. The Bible says there is a time for everything. You may have heard a popular axiom or aphorism that says uh, opportunity comes but once. It's true. It was once a year that the angel came down and stirred the pool. So if you missed it, you couldn't say, I'm coming back. Don't worry. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll show up in September. Are you with me? Yeah. So there is, there is something right now today that the Lord might want to give to you in part in your life that you might miss. If you stay offended. Are you with me? Offense is a nasty thief. Offense is worse than an arm robber. It robs you of your peace. It robs you of your smile. Offense is a cancer. It eats you up. It kills you slowly. But I pray in Jesus' name that the Lord will empower us to overcome offense. In the name of Jesus. Permit me to give a few more points here. And uh, the Lord will lead us from there. So it, it blinds you from seeing well. It hinders you from receiving from the Lord. Offense is an enemy of progress. So because it is a bait, it does not show up until it's time for you to make progress. Or you were single and then he just showed up. Some nice, wonderful man just showed up. A wonderful man just showed up in your life in the process of making things happen along the way out of nowhere out of nowhere same man and same woman who was praying for a wonderful woman or a wonderful partner like this you got it and you praise god and then it shows up you are praying for that money to start that business it came and then out of nowhere shows up you are praying for that, that wonderful job opportunity and out of nowhere shows up say so don't take offense now there's a difference between wisdom and offense now. So I don't want nobody going by thinking, oh man, I shouldn't have. No, if, if, the, if wisdom led you, then that's different. Do I have wisdom in my house? The presence of wisdom is here. Yeah. Offense stunts your growth or progress. But in this world, growth is very important. Every living thing that was made by God was made with something in them called the potential to grow. 
potential to grow. God wants us to evolve to become. Hallelujah. God wants us to evolve to become. Always evolve. We must not remain on the same spiritual plane for too long. Are you with me? So what offense, one thing that offense does is that it keeps us on one spiritual plane. One, one level offense. Whereas your, our brothers and sisters in the Lord are moving. We are praying. For, come 4th of July. We are going to be here. Is it 12 or so? 12, 12, 12 noon. We are going to be here. Are you with me? Fellowshipping, winning souls. Offense will say, yeah, that, that brother is going to be there. That, that brother is going to, I don't want to, you know, yeah. May the same, nah, nah. And then you miss an opportunity to be a, a blessing on, on, to someone. Are you with me? It's offense. Offense. You miss an opportunity to grow. Offense. I pray in Jesus' name against any spirit of offense. Now, b- bear with me. Let's, let's do this. Being offended, of course, can make you a murderer. It can make you a murderer. It can make you a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. The first person who murdered his half brother. Cain was the first person who murdered his brother. Now the first person who murdered his half brother. In the Bible is King David's eldest son. In revenge. In revenge. He, so he killed Amnon. Amnon was his half brother. Now, Amnon had sinned. He had done something wrong. He slept with Tamar, his sister. The guy became so offended. He stayed offended. He hid it in himself for a long time. One day, he threw a huge party and wrote a letter to King David. Went to King David and said, Daddy, please, I'm throwing a party. Would you please permit this, your son, to come along? King David knew. He felt it in his heart. But yet he let the son go. And that was when he was murdered. So offense makes you a murderer. You can murder people with your words. Come on now. So you are with me. Yeah, yeah. So offense can make you a murderer. Read it when you get home. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 20 down to 39. Offense makes you envious. We see that in the life of Cain. In the book of Genesis. The guy became envious of his own brother because the brother's offering was accepted by the Lord and his offering was rejected. Instead of just learning from his brother and giving God a better kind of offering, he became he was offended and then became envious of the brother and said, I cannot stand this anymore. Let's get rid of him. So offense also makes you jealous. Offense breeds rebellion. Absalom worked in King David's palace. When offense, the bait of offense was introduced to him, he took it, accepted it, and he became rebellious. As a result of that, he died. Offense moves you far from your place of purpose fulfillment. Offense. Imagine a child being corrected by their parents and then they get upset. Imagine. Imagine a child being corrected by their teacher and then they get upset. Something that we see in our schools a lot today, in the public schools mostly. In the high school, you see a student fighting a teacher. I don't know about many African countries. But in West Africa, such a thing can never happen. Maybe East Africa as well. Such a thing can never happen. A teacher who's barely paid much, barely paid enough, sacrifices to teach you in your school to make you a better person. And then you fight your teacher. Hey, shh. The devil is a liar. Hey, shh. 
may the spirit of the lord jesus christ see no wonder no wonder no wonder our society now is producing certain unpleasant breed of creatures but i pray in jesus name the church will stand be offense free rebellion free in the name of jesus the church will stand to be a, a, a rebellion free church an offense free church a spirit filled church in the name of jesus i'm not just praying for transformation prayers and i'm praying for the church of the lord jesus christ across the world i pray let the church be a rebellion free church a spirit filled church an offense free church in the name of jesus Offense chokes the word of God in you. Offense can cut your life short as I've explained already. Offense makes you poor. Offense is a thief. I met someone years ago. I was trying to minister to them at a gas station. Then I began to... Uh, tell them about themselves this guy began to cry and then he said yeah she she did she hurt me she hurt me so much she hurt me this guy was in his 50s and you could tell the guy has stopped growing at a certain stage in his life because of offense saints it is not a bad thing to be offended because in this world you will get offended but it is bad when you stay offended i have stayed offended for a very long time at certain stages in my life and it has hurt me it hurt when i stayed offended hallelujah and anyone who's ever stayed offended at any point in their life can attest to the fact that it's robbed them of so much it robbed you of your peace it robbed you of your joy it robbed you of your happiness it robbed you even of your own money it'll buy you stress for free you don't have to tip it hallelujah so you see you will get offended but there is a how to handle offense, which by the special grace of God, I will tackle later. But write this down. Offense destroys relationships. Offense makes you focus on what people are not instead of what they are. The good and great things and people that they are. Offense definitely drives you away from the presence of God. I want to speak to someone who was offended this morning. Permit me to come your lane. You're offended this morning. How did you feel? Being offended. And how do you feel even now? The Lord wants you free. The Lord wants your house free. In the name of Jesus. Because offense drives you away from the presence of the Father offense it denies you of what is rightfully yours hallelujah imagine being so offended and you know you're offended and you are holding in your heart things against people and you have your hands lifted oh lord i love you i love you i love you lord and your mercy never who are you deceiving and the enemy might be standing right next to you for you out of disrespect he may not even be standing on your right hand side he may be standing at your left right and all over you he may be hugging you while you are worshiping the lord are you with me the bible said and i saw zachariah the high priest standing before the lord the angel of the lord and satan 
standing at his right hand side to resist him so you can be a believer in church and the enemy waiting on you as for here we forbid them from coming in but they may be waiting outside hallelujah that's why it feels good to be in the presence of God but when you leave then those thoughts begin to come again but right now we send prayer ahead of you in the name of Jesus any demon of offense any demon of confusion any demon of any demon that deprives you of the good that belongs to you by prayer let them be bound now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God would you lift up your voice right now and begin to pray against any form of offense in the name of Jesus Jesus father your word says in this world we will be offended but therefore you told us to rejoice for you have overcome we pray in the name of Jesus Lord for the grace to overcome any form of offense I pray for the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus any form of offense in the heart of your men in the heart of your women in the hearts of your people I pray Lord be our search in this hour set the hearts of your people clean the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus let any form of offense be removed by prayer in the name of Jesus we come against the spirit of offense in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, offense is a thief. All right. So we are praying against. We are praying that offense will no longer take anything away from us. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah. Heavenly Father I stand on your word say I stand on your word and declare that no form of offense shall be able to steal from me or deprive me of anything good in the name of Jesus say offense cannot dwell in me from this day I declare my body my spirit my soul be free from offense in the name of Jesus say be free from offense in the name of Jesus Offense is a stumbling block. It is a resistor. All right. The Bible says, and earlier I said, offense is, I, I said the Lord should be uh, Zachariah in the presence of the angel. It's really Joshua. Okay. The Bible says, and I saw Joshua standing and Satan at his right hand side to resist him stand before the angel of the Lord and Satan was at his right hand side to resist him anytime we are offended it opens doors for the enemy to come in are you with me it opens doors for the enemy to come so we are praying against we are praying that any door that has been open any door that has been open we are saying by prayer in the name of Jesus. Any door that has been opened as a result of offense, let that door be shut now in the name of Jesus. Say, say in the name of Jesus. Any door that has been opened as a result of offense in my life, by prayer, by the mercy of God, by the blood of the Lamb, let that door be shut say oh lord as i let go let that door be shut in the name of jesus say i shut the door now say i shut the door now say any form of resistance of the enemy 
against my life as a result of offense by prayer let a resistance be broken say break say break say break say any satanic resistance demonic resistance be broken evil resistance be broken in the name of jesus amen i declare you are free by the blood of the lamb jesus i declare you are free by the blood of the lamb jesus i declare you are free by the blood of the lamb jesus I declare you are free by the blood of the Lamb Jesus. I declare you are free by the blood of the Lamb Jesus. Shout I'm free. Shout I'm free. Say I am free. Say it until you believe it. Say I'm free. I'm free from offense. Say I am free in the name of Jesus. Say I will not die. I am free. I am free. Hallelujah. I declare in the name of Jesus that you no longer have a stumbling block in your life. Put it up, please. Any stumbling block that has been placed in your life as a result of offense, let it be removed now. In the name of Jesus, you will not die as a result of offense. I pray if offense has shut your spiritual ears, let it be open. If offense has blinded you, your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. In the name of Jesus. If offense has robbed you of anything good, I declare a restoration in the name of Jesus. You see, offense can be transferred. You see, it can be transferred from friend to friend. So when you hang around people who are offended, eventually you also become offended. And your offense is directed towards the same direction that they their offense is directed so if your daddy is offended by your mommy she can he can transfer it to you and then you also get offended if your mommy was or is offensive to you hallelujah that's why you can meet someone who's never met their parent him why <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah so in that same way absalom and for ahithophel transferred the impact of the offense and the offense itself he presented it to absalom and absalom took it as a bait he took it yeah. he said have you not seen what your father did he took this person's wife and so he also embraced it so the enemy can influence you to be offended at the leaders of the church such that a sweet wonderful man a sweet wonderful woman all of a sudden you become different maybe angry bitter rebellious and the list goes on and on why because offense has been but you see the bible says we should not resist any such person but as for the spirit we resist it hallelujah i pray in jesus name any transfer of offense to your account let it be blocked in the name of jesus let it be blocked in jesus name any transaction of offense against your destiny i declare by prayer it is cancelled let that transaction be be declined in the name of jesus amen hallelujah let's pray over your tithe anyone who's tithing hallelujah lift it up if you would if you would lift it up in place
someone's money is increasing yeah. hallelujah I declare new job offers new contracts new doors be open the Lord wants to bless the church do not allow offense to stop it lift it up let's pray Heavenly Father we owe you 10% of what you have given us we have come to present it to you please receive it bless us beyond understanding in the name of Jesus you said in your word that you rebuke the devourer for our sake we pray in the name of it that you do exactly so for us we depend on you we rely on you in Jesus name amen amen if you give it online information is on your screen or just let's save the people of God if you are able to rise with your offering I ask that you do so Ushers, let's please have those of you online go ahead and give your tithe Ushers, let's serve the people of God praise God Let's pray over our offering. That was 41 days of prayer song. Mm -hmm. Amen. Say, Father, this is my worship. I thank you for blessing me. I pray by your mercy, let increase come to my house. Let increase come, come to my house. Say, let offense leave me leave my house leave my church in the name of jesus say let offense leave my city leave my town in the name of jesus say make my city a city without offense say make my home a home without offense say make my church home a church home without offense in the name of jesus say heavenly father i thank you for making me a solution to world class problems if you believe it shout hallelujah as we serve amen
by the grace of God tonight uh, at 6 p.m. we're gonna have fun here prayer starts at 5 45 um, we have Bishop Asari joining us tonight it's gonna be good <laughs> hallelujah it's gonna be we're gonna it's gonna be good tonight so join us by the special grace of God also on Tuesday 6 is that's the 4th of July right on Tuesday um, we're gonna spend time here as a family I want you to bring your friends bring your family bring your loved ones um, bring your boyfriends and your girlfriends if you don't want us to know just you know what to do tell them if you see me coming turn around or something all right so by the special grace of god it's going to be fun here uh, all right and guess guess who who's 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 the brain behind all of this i'll let you all keep guessing then all right so it's going to be fun we are going to have a cooking competition right as uh, a few men are going to be cooking since a lot of the men claim to know how to cook so i think i'll join the women <laughs> no my wife is lydia manda so i'll join my wife and the two shall become one but um <laughs> but uh so we'll, it will be fun it will be fun i'm not going to give the details because the men are too sharp yeah they don't even know what they are going to cook how they are going to cook but if they know how to cook we watch them cook and we will taste the food and we will tell we will let them know which one tastes um but if you are a wife to a husband you will not be a part of the tasters we don't want any offense hallelujah praise god so it's going to be fun the kids are going to have a lot of fun as well They're going to have a lot of fun as well i think this screen behind us looks huge enough for a wonderful movie and uh we have it will be fun it'll be fun okay so um just come let's have fun together it'll be an opportunity to win souls as well to tell someone about jesus christ so uh unlike the park oh you're not clapping for jesus <laughs> hallelujah so unlike a national park where you find it difficult to cool yourself and uh here you can just come in to the ac and just relax you know with your uh, glass in your hand your legs crossed and uh, glass of orange juice or grape juice or something hallelujah are you excited yeah. and i hear that some of the women also uh because they love to cook uh they want to also express their gifts so it is fine those who are going to be cooking those who are going to be cooking those who want to cook and bring food um right after service right after service i want you to see um where's yo yo wave there's a hand waving i want you to see yo yo uh carmen wave your hand so we have we yo yo and carmen i want you to see them uh give them your names and are we still on ww that we are oh let's close our online family listen you are blessed someone say i am blessed i am highly favored say i'm too blessed to be stressed too anointed to be disappointed i refuse to be discouraged i refuse to be sad i refuse to cry and here's the reason why i have a god who loves me i have a god who calls me his own Though all things may change my god remains the same he's promised to be with me as i go through